Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to talk about something called RDAs, which are the nutrient requirements that we need. Okay, so a lot of people have heard about them, but they don't know about them and what that means. But I wanted to bring up your awareness on the fact that an RDA is really a minimum requirement, a bare minimum requirement to prevent a deficiency disease. Okay, so you have scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency. It's a classic vitamin C deficiency. It's called you have beriberi, which is a B1 deficiency, uh, pellagra, which is another B vitamin deficiency. So these are diseases. So number one, it's very hard to know if you're getting your requirements. Okay, so you're gonna you're not gonna take your app out and everything you eat and track it and say, oh yeah, I'm getting enough vitamin A and vitamin B and things like that. Um, and number two, um, another thing that will another couple of variables that can interfere with this is that let's say your body is under a massive stress or you have an infection, or you have an injury, or you're getting up in age, or you have poor digestion. All of these factors can then increase the need for nutrients. Now, I put a link down below of a document that you can download that basically lists all the nutrients and the top foods that you would have to focus on to get those nutrients. And I recommend that you just scan the list. Of course, you don't have to memorize it, but just look at it and just make sure you're consuming more of those foods because you have nutrient dense foods and then you have other foods that are not that nutrient dense, but they're still good to consume. So let's just talk about the nutrient dense foods. We have cruciferous, wild caught fish is very nutrient dense, um, pasture raised eggs, grass fed animal products and the cheeses, sprouts, which have a high concentration of something called sulforaphane, which is a great uh, phytonutrient that can help you. Organ meats, it's actually at the top of the list, it has like the most concentrated nutrients, it's incredible. Seafood, like you have oysters and you have shrimp, things like that are very nutrient dense, okay? Versus cucumbers, eggplant, squash, iceberg lettuce, onion. You know, you could eat these, but just realize that these are not as dense. So in the download below, you can click it, I listed all the real uh, key foods that you should focus on. And one last point about the version of ketosis that I recommend. Um, I'm always going to recommend seven to 10 cups of vegetables, not just for the potassium requirements, but for all these other nutrients in the vegetables that you're going to get. Because if you actually consume seven to 10 cups, you're going to get plenty of these other nutrients and you're not going to have to worry about someday getting some type of deficiency. But I believe a lot of people have subclinical vitamin and mineral deficiencies that aren't going to necessarily show up in a blood test because the real problem is in the tissues. I mean, even when you go into ketosis and you're converting from sugar burning to fat burning, if you're deficient in potassium or B vitamins, you are going to experience side effects, fatigue, keto fatigue and keto rash, things like that. So go ahead and download this document, check it out and see if it can help you. If you're enjoying this information and getting something out of it, please give me an unbiased Google review. I put a link down below. Thanks.